If you've been looking for a video examining the relationship between propolis and hair growth, then you've come to the right place. In today's video, we'll be looking at what exactly propolis is and the recent scientific research linking it to increased hair growth. Guys, make sure to stay tuned to the end because we'll be giving you some practical ideas on how you can start using propolis as part of your hair care routine. Hey guys, Leon here from hairguard.com where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Now, if you're watching this video because you're personally worried about your own hair loss, don't forget to click the link in the description to take the Hair Guard Hair Loss Quiz. You'll answer a few short and simple questions about yourself and your hair loss, then you'll receive free, personalized, expert advice on how to regrow healthy hair. First guys, what is propolis? Well, propolis is an edible material that honeybees spontaneously manufacture. They mainly use it to seal cracks and crevices within their hives, but sometimes they do use it for some other things, like smoothing the interior of the beehive, which can help maintain a consistent internal temperature and prevent the beehive from weathering. So colloquially, Propolis is sometimes referred to as bee glue. You can see in this photo an example of a gap between two pieces of wood that the bees have tried to seal with propolis. The actual term propolis comes from two Greek words, pro meaning in front of and polis meaning city. So propolis is literally the defendant of the beehive, intending to keep out intruders and maintain the fortress intact, allowing the bees to get on with their business on the inside. Now, up until a few years ago, honey producers used to discourage the bees from manufacturing propolis. But in recent years, it's become a very important commodity in its own right. Along with honey and royal jelly, it is now one of the three main honey bee products. Bees make the propolis by collecting resin from the cracks in tree bark and mixing it with beeswax, as well as enzymes from their saliva. So its composition is about 50% resin, 30% wax, and the rest is various compounds, including essential oils and pollen. A class of chemical compounds abundant in propolis are the so-called flavonoids. If you are a regular viewer on this channel, you will have heard us mention flavonoids in relation to various natural hair loss treatments before. They have very well documented hair growth properties. Propolis is also rich in vitamins, including B1, B2, B6 and E, as well as various trace minerals. So what are the bioactive properties of propolis? So the flavonoids that you find in propolis are known to have a variety of health benefits. They are antioxidant, antimicrobial, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, and even antifungal. And they are also used to accelerate wound healing as well as to protect the heart. So propolis is used for a variety of conditions, including parasitic infections of the intestine, as well as vaginal infections. Also, it's used in mouthwashes to help promote oral health. It also appears to be very effective in several skin conditions. These include acne, the healing of cuts, burns, and more. So you can find it in all sorts of skincare creams and ointments. So what evidence is there for propolis being used to treat hair growth? Now, in 2014, a fascinating paper out of Japan was published in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry. Guys, I've linked to the study in the description below, so you can read it all if you want to. The researchers wanted to examine the hair growth effect of topical propolis on mice. There were two groups of mice. One group had their back shaved, and in the other, hairs were forcibly waxed out. Before we look at the experiment in more detail, I should probably explain something. When you forcibly remove the entire hair shaft from the root of the follicle, you force it to go back into a new growth cycle, a new anagen phase. Meaning that when you wax an entire patch of skin, you synchronize all the hair follicles to go back into the start of anagen. Now back to the study, regardless if they had their hair shaved, all waxed off, mice in the propolis group were treated with a diluted propolis extract. This was applied topically, whereas the control mice were treated with the dilution liquid only, and that contained no propolis. The hair regrowth differences between the propolis treated mice and the control ones were very impressive to say the least. In the shaved group, the propolis treated mice experienced hair regrowth about 10 days before the control mice, at 11 versus 21 for control. You can see in these series of images, the comparison photos taken on identical days after the mice were shaved. The control mice is in the top row and the propolis treated mouse in the bottom. 
Now, in the depilated mice, no such difference between propolis and control mice was noted, precisely because the depilation synchronized the hair growth cycle across both groups. But what's really intriguing about this study are the microscopic differences between the propolis treated and control mice. The structure in the hair follicle that is responsible for producing the actual hair shaft is the so-called hair matrix, the bulb-like structure at the base of the follicle. The keratinocytes are a type of rapidly multiplying cells in the matrix. As the keratinocytes multiply, they're pushed upwards and differentiate into the various cell types that make up the hair shaft. The shaft keeps on growing as long as the keratinocytes multiply and differentiate, until the follicle enters the so-called catagen phase of its cycle, when the keratinocytes stop proliferating and the follicle starts to regress. And what the researchers found was that the propolis they applied on the mice directly stimulated the proliferation and differentiation of keratinocytes. And this accelerated growth was achieved without causing any abnormalities in the follicle. They also highlighted two compounds in the propolis that might be responsible for this effect, chlorogenic acid and caffeic acid. Now, this property of propolis to stimulate the keratinocyte sets it apart from both finasteride and minoxidil. These are the two FDA-approved medications for male pattern hair loss, and none of them stimulate the keratinocytes. So, according to the Japanese scientists, and I'm quoting here, propolis and either minoxidil or finasteride, if applied in combination, would be expected to promote hair growth synergistically. Now, the results of this study were probably the inspiration behind a similar study published two years later in the Journal of Advanced Biomedical Research. This was carried out by a team of Iranian researchers and involved shaved rats. There were five groups of rats. The first was a control group that received no treatment. The second was treated with 2% minoxidil daily. And the third was with a hair wax containing Aruca sativa seed oil. This is another compound with reported hair growth properties. The fourth group, the one that interests us, was treated with a wax that contained both propolis and the seed oil. And the fifth and final group was also a kind of control group treated with a liquid paraffin base that didn't have an active ingredient in it. So in this graph, you can see the average length of hair 10, 20, and 30 days after the rats were shaved. The two control groups are depicted in the far left and far right. The minoxidil group is second to the left and the seed oil group in the middle. And the test group that received the actual propolis is second to the right. Stars on top of the bars show that a particular treatment had a statistically significant difference to the control group. And the more stars, the more significant the difference. You can see that the regrowth in the propolis treatment group was dramatically better than in the control groups and on a more or less the same level as minoxidil. A similar pattern was observed when the researchers weighed the newly regrown hairs 30 days after shaving. You can see in this graph how rats treated with the propolis had significantly heavier hairs than either of the two control groups. And the weight of their hair was almost identical to the minoxidil treated group. And again, the same pattern for the percentage of hair follicles that were in the antigen growth phase. The propolis and minoxidil treated groups had the highest percentage antigen hairs than any other group. And these differences were highly statistically significant versus controls. So does propolis work for human alopecia? Well guys, that's the research that we currently have on propolis for hair growth. The data is definitely very encouraging, but limited. There are two very positive rodent studies, but nothing on humans yet. And we know from other lines of research the results in rodents can be tricky. Sometimes they carry over to humans and sometimes they don't. Meaning at this point, we can't know for sure if you're likely to see any hair regrowth from consuming propolis. But okay, say you want to give it a go. How do you go about taking it? Well, since we have no human studies, there is no tried and tested protocol. Even the two rodent studies used very different methods of application. But basically, your two major options are to take it orally or to take it topically. Now, if you decide to supplement orally, there is no shortage of ways that you can consume the propolis. It's available in capsules, either pure form or combined with other ingredients like aloe vera. You can also get it as a powder in purified form or in liquid form as an extract. Now, there is one thing to bear in mind. There will be significant variability from one propolis product to the next and this is inevitable. And this depends on which part of the world it's been collected from. Uh, the bees will have used different trees and plants to make the propolis. So it's not a standardized product. And that means there may be differences in the color, the texture, and the taste. 
It's just something to bear in mind in case you end up trying different brands. Now, what about the dosage? Well, as I said, we have nothing concrete to go on at this point. But oral propolis has been studied as a supplement against other conditions like diabetes, and with very positive results, I might add. And if that research is anything to go by for hair loss, you can start off with a 900 milligram daily dosage. You can take this in the form of three 300 milligram capsules daily. This stuff is non-toxic, so there are no issues with potentially overdosing. But like any other food, if you haven't consumed propolis before, it's best to start off with a very low dose the first time. That's just to make sure that you don't have a rare allergic reaction to it. Now, if you want to use it topically, there are two options. Firstly, you can purchase one of the dozen propolis containing shampoos, conditioners, or hair masks that are currently out there on the market. To give you an idea, I just typed propolis shampoo on Amazon and got 265 results. The problem with this is that the propolis will be one of many other ingredients that go into the product. Now, we haven't actually tested any of these products ourselves, so we can't make a recommendation on this, unfortunately. If you're watching this video because you're personally worried about your hair loss, then what I want to do is mention the Hair Guard Caffeine Shampoo. The Hair Guard Caffeine Shampoo has only natural ingredients, meaning that it can help stabilize your hair loss and also promote healthy hair growth. The shampoo comes with a 180 day money back guarantee, so it's entirely risk free to try. Now, there are many other things that you can do when washing your hair to promote healthy hair growth. So I'm going to link you to another video at the end of this video where we talk about things like tap water, temperature, shampoos, conditioners, and so on. But if you do decide to buy a propolis containing shampoo, then just make sure to read the full list of ingredients and select something with as few harsh chemicals as possible. Now, another method of application, assuming that you have the time, is to include some propolis into your homemade hair mask. So again, this isn't based on existing research, but if you're using something like topical onion juice or stinging nettle for your hair loss, it definitely won't hurt to add a few tablespoons of propolis tincture. Now, we have done a few videos on homemade topical formulations for hair loss in the past, so check them out to get some ideas. And guys, if you do decide to give propolis a try, we'd love to hear about it in the comment section. Guys, make sure to click the video on the screen right now to learn more about shampoos, water, temperature, and so on for healthy hair growth. I'll see you in the next video.